Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to Cape Canaveral, Florida, and to the commissioning ceremony of USS Indiana. I am Lieutenant Commander Jason Spray, the ship's executive officer. On behalf of the crew, I would like to extend our sincerest thanks for joining us here today. Before our ceremony begins, I would ask you to please silence your cell phones for the duration of the ceremony. Thank you. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS Indiana, the fourth ship to bear the name of our 19th state. The first Indiana, BB-1, was the lead ship in her class and the first battleship in the United States Navy, commissioned in 1895. She played a pivotal role in the Spanish-American War where she took part in both the blockade of Santiago de, Santiago de Cuba and the Battle of Santiago de Cuba. She was responsible for the destruction of the Spanish destroyers Pluton and Fuhrer. After the war, she was a gunnery training ship and was decommissioned in 1919. The second ship to bear the name was BB-50, a South Dakota-class battleship whose keel was laid but never completed because of the Washington Naval Treaty signed in 1922 limited displacement of warships to 10,000 tons. Deemed ineffective by the late 1930s due to German and Japanese aggression, the treaty was abandoned and construction began on a new class of heavy battleships. USS Indiana, BB-58, was commissioned in April 1942. Upon completion of her gunnery trials off the coast of Maine on November 9, 1942, she immediately steamed for the Panama Canal. By November 14th, she was assigned as the flagship for Task Group 26. During her service in the Pacific, she earned an impressive nine battle stars for service in the Asiatic Fleet. She was decommissioned in 1947. We are honored to have several members of her crew with us here today. These heroes served bravely in defense of this country, and we are proud to share the unique bond of service and ship name with these fellow sailors. Gentlemen, thank you for your service and protecting this great nation. Please join me in recognizing these heroes and all veterans present. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The ship moored before you, affectionately referred to as a boat by members of the submarine community, will soon join America's silent service. Indiana is the 16th submarine of the Virginia class. With its sister ships, it represents a revolution in submarine design, construction, and mission capability. Brimming with leading edge technology and advanced engineering, this vessel brings versatility and firepower to the fleet. Indiana and the Virginia class are among the most effective platforms in the United States Navy, and this warship takes another step forward in advancing the superiority of our submarine force. Able to operate in, in the far corners of the world's oceans undetected, while connected to air, sea, land-based forces, as well as keyshore facilities, these submarines are equipped to wage multi-dimensional warfare around the globe. Indiana's adaptability makes it highly responsive to changing mission requirements and provides the nation with the capabilities required to be the decisive factor in any conflict. In addition to anti-submarine, anti-surface ship, and countermine warfare, Indiana will support surveillance, special operations, and covert strike missions. Thank you for allowing each of us the privilege to serve our nation as part of your Navy while proudly bearing the name Indiana. The submarine you see behind me was christened on April 29, 2017 in Newport News, Virginia. Today she is complete and battle ready. We are all proud to serve on the newest attack submarine in the United States Navy. Today's ceremony is a time-honored tradition that began with the commissioning of the Navy's first ship a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transition from silent hull to fully alive warship. My shipmates, our commissioning crew, hereafter known as plank owners, are in formation and ready. Will the guests please rise 
and remain standing for the arrival of our official party, honors, presentation of colors, our national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Captain Gerald Petticord, United States Navy, retired. <laughs> Captain Melvin Underwood, United States Navy, Command Chaplain, Commander, Submarine Force Atlantic. <laughs> Mr. Ray Shearer, Chairman, USS Indiana Commissioning Committee. <laughs> Captain Martin Muckian, United States Navy, Commander, Submarine Squadron 6. <laughs> Ms. Jennifer Boykin, President, Newport News Shipbuilding. Mr. Jeffrey Geiger, President, General Dynamics Electric Boat. The Honorable Bob Hogue, Mayor, City of Cape Canaveral, Florida. Vice Admiral Chaz Richard, United States Navy, Commander, Submarine Forces. The Honorable James Gertz, Assistant Secretary of the Navy, Research, Development, and Acquisition. <laughs> Admiral Frank Caldwell, United States Navy, Director, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program. <laughs> the Honorable Jim Banks, United States Representative, 3rd District, State of Indiana. The Honorable Todd Rokita, United States Representative, 4th District, State of Indiana. The Honorable Bill Posey, United States Representative, 8th District, State of Florida. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Ms. Diane Donald, escorted by Senior Chief Petty Officer Charles Simons, the Chief of the Boat. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Eric Holcomb, Governor, State of Indiana, escorted today by Captain Jesse Zimbauer, Indiana's prospective commanding officer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Eric Holcomb.
platform. Ready, two. Advance the colors. So proudly we held at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. It proved through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Retire the colors. We would like to thank the Purdue Chamber Choir Ensemble, Navy Band Southeast, the Air Force Station Cape Canaveral Saluting Battery, the Navy Ordnance Test Unit Color Guard for their participation in our ceremony today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Underwood will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, in whom we live and move and have our being, we humbly pray that you will bless us all here today with the comfort of your spirit as we gather to commission the USS Indiana, the fourth of her name. Endow us with loyalty and devotion to mission and focus our hearts on the rich heritage of freedom which has been handed to us from the patriots of our past and who are present with us. Bless the officers and crew of this ship, giving them fidelity in their assignments as they represent their ship, their shipmate, our Navy, and their namesake state. May they exemplify liberty and enlightenment and a far-reaching influence as they seek deterrence through strength. As the state of Indiana embodies the crossroads of America, may the USS Indiana embody the crossroads of power, strength, determination, and deterrence. Father, grant them fair weather in all of their voyages, and if dangers confront them in the midst of the sea, may your presence abide with them as a strong tower of defense, preserving them from the dangers of our enemies. Father, make them fast, make them powerful, and make them lethal as they defend our home front. Make these silent warriors silent victors should they be called upon to fight the good fight. Father, to those gathered here this morning, I ask that their attendance be blessed and marked as a joining of a family of support for this newest boat of the line. May their continuing support, thoughts and prayers 
for this ship and her crew continue long after this ceremony ends. Let us now have a sense of your presence, Father, as we celebrate in a moment of solemn dedication. In your holy name, amen. Thank you, Chaplain Underwood. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's company, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Bill Posey. Uh, thank you all, and uh, to our honored guests, welcome to Florida, the Sunshine State. And more specifically, welcome to the 8th Congressional District, home of America's Space Coast. Hope that you can make time while you're here to enjoy some of our beaches, and the other amenities our community has to offer. It's truly a special community, and we love our military here. Today, we gather at Port Canaveral, the second busiest cruise port in the United States of America. Not to boast, but we're surrounded by some of the hardest working, friendliest, and talented men and women that you will ever meet. Just a little bit to the north of us is the historic Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, now known as uh, Cape Kennedy, managed by the 45th Space Wing. They support our nation's space missions. NASA's Kennedy Space Center, our nation's historic gateway to space, and our Naval Ordnance Test Unit. Our U.S. Coast Guard Station and Patrick Air Force Base are close. We're honored and blessed in our community to have over 77,000 veterans who have chosen to make our district their home. We're grateful to them for their service. We owe a tremendous amount of gratitude to those brave men and women in uniform and their families who have made so many sacrifices. And to the crew of the USS Indiana, all of our servicemen, men and women present, thank you for your commitment to defending our freedom. And thank you for your family's sacrifices. It's all been given for a freedom that too many of us uh, take for granted every day. From Harris Corporation to Northrop Grumman, Lockheed Martin, DRS, and Boeing, we're all proud in our support role of our war fighters. As you can imagine, we are honored to have the privilege of hosting this exciting commissioning of the U.S. Indiana here. Thank each and every one of you for your participation today. Uh, God bless you. May God keep you safe. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Posey. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Eric Holcomb. Thank you, Commander Spray. Good morning. What a great Navy day. I bring greetings from some 6.6 .6 million of my fellow Hoosiers who are brimming, as you described, and beaming with pride this morning. Pride for this boat and pride for her crew. We are truly honored that the United States Navy's newest fast attack submarine is named after our home, Indiana. And in getting ready for today's ceremony as a history buff, I did a little rereading of my history. And as you described, Commander Spray, I looked into the previous ships named USS Indiana, and it just amazes me the leaps in technology that have occurred over the last century plus since President Benjamin Harrison, a Hoosier, I might add, attended that commissioning of the first USS Indiana all the way back in 1895. The New York Times headline on that day, October 19, 1895, said, quote, Indiana a wonder, highly successful speed test of the new battleship. Indiana a wonder. I mean, I love that phrase. And actually, come to think of it, Indiana a wonder could be the headline of today. 
for lots of specific reasons. When you think about it, the first USS Indiana had a top speed of 15 knots. This one, 25 knots, underwater. Battleship number one, United States Steamship Indiana had two sets of vertical inverted triple expansion reciprocating steam engines. That's a lot under the hood back in the day. But this USS Indiana has a S9G reactor which will operate for 33 years. It's life without refueling. I need one of those for my truck. <laughs> the first USS Indiana was armed with 42 guns, one pounders and six pounders, six, eight, and 13 inchers, and four torpedo tubes for good measure. This USS Indiana, well, I think it's safe to say it has a little bit more firepower. The first USS Indiana was a first of its kind battleship, a modern marvel that symbolized the growing power, both military and industrial power of the United States. And this Virginia class submarine is also a modern marvel, carrying on the proud tradition of technological achievement that has come to define our courageous Navy. This boat is another example of Indiana, as was mentioned, being at the crossroads or maybe even the crosswaters of the world. Sailors from all over the country will serve on this USS Indiana. In fact, I met a few yesterday and again this morning. Now, I know you all aren't from, all of you from Indiana, although there is one, but I can assure you now and forevermore, you will always be distinguished Hoosiers. So Captain, I hope that you uh, found room on the boat for a basketball hoop, being a true Hoosier, even if it's a Nerf. But in fact, our ties to this boat grow deeper and will forever do so, much, much deeper than our love for hoops. Skipper, as you mentioned last night, uh, Indiana is known for growing and for building things and distributing them. So it should come to no one's surprise that Hoosier Hands played a loving part, a big part of building and then therefore being able to deploy this USS Indiana with more than 100 Indiana companies from small mom and pop shops to international Fortune 500 supplying parts for this ship. Raytheon and Rolls-Royce, Caterpillar, IN Tech, steel mills up in Northwest Indiana in the region, furniture makers like Miller uh, Veneer and High Tech Veneer, they all contributed their love and care and their expertise to this USS Indiana. So as you all are serving on this boat, know that your crew is a lot bigger than you may think. In fact, I'd like to say this crew is 6.6 .6 million strong because there are in fact 6.6 .6 million Hoosiers who are proud of this USS Indiana. We're proud of and we pray for every sailor that makes up this crew. Thank you all for answering the call. Thank you all for your service and your sacrifice for your families as well. Thank you for proudly representing the very best among us for the job that you do. And may God continue to bless each and every one of you and of the United States of America. Fair winds and following seas, my shipmates. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, Governor Holcomb. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Bob Hogue. The 
Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and I'd like to make a special welcome to the state of Indiana. I'm uh, proud to be standing here today and welcome to Cape Canaveral, Fort Canaveral, and the world's Space Coast. It's a pleasure to be here and celebrate such an event today. I'd personally like to welcome all the visitors to the area, if you're from Indiana or wherever. Uh, this is a very, very unique area. We have the fort, like it's been mentioned, no two, cruise ships, cargo, commercial fishing, commercial entities, commercial restaurants, all throughout the port area. It's a very diversified area. We have Canaveral Air Force Station to, to the north of us, Kennedy Space Center, where we have put man on the moon and brought man back to this point right here. Brevard County, it's a very, very unique I mean, very unique county. We have very high tech companies here throughout Brevard County from Titusville to Palm Bay, which is about 75 miles between. And all that is right here at our doorstep. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome the USS Indiana and this crew. You're part of the reason why we're all here, really. It's, we're here because of no two in the port. It's been part of my past life, no two. I used to have some part of no two. I'm proud to stand here today and be proud to be part of this gathering. We can all be proud of the event as American citizens. We have a very, very unique country that we live in, I think. I'd like to take this moment in closing. I'm going to do, be real short. I'm not going to be long with you. In closing, I'd like to thank Captain Zimbauer and his crew for their service to this country. It's greatly appreciated. We all take this for granted that we live under freedom. I'd like to wish them a safe command. God bless them and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Hogue. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Jennifer Boykin. Thank you. Good morning, distinguished platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, and especially our ship sponsor, Diane Donald. I am honored to be here today to represent the women and men of Newport News Shipbuilding who helped build USS Indiana. Commissioning is a special day in the life of this submarine. It signifies the end of Indiana's first chapter and the start of her new story of the 16th Virginia-class submarine to join the U.S. Navy's fleet. As we turn a symbolic page today, I'm reminded of the expression, it is not the destination, it's the journey. There are many people who have been part of the journey to bring this submarine to life. For the more than 4,000 shipbuilders from Newport News and Electric Boat and the thousands of suppliers who supported Indiana's construction, shipbuilding isn't just a job. These proud Americans understand that what they do every day contributes to something greater than themselves. They pour their hearts and their souls into their work. It's a labor of love for our country and a demonstration of patriotic spirit. Throughout this journey, we have had the honor and privilege of working in partnership with fellow patriots. At Indiana's christening, Diane Donald imparted her own sense of duty, dedication, and enthusiasm onto the submarine. And I know her unwavering support will only grow throughout the submarine's service life. We also experienced Hoosier pride firsthand from the state's leadership to the commissioning committee and the more than 100 supplier companies in Indiana that build critical parts for Virginia-class submarines. And last, but certainly not least, we partnered with Indiana's able crew to bring this submarine, their submarine, to life. And I can attest after riding Alpha Sea Trials that this crew is well-equipped and well-prepared. Commander Simbauer, our support for your crew is strong. 
you can feel confident knowing that the thousands of shipbuilders and suppliers who worked on your boat have done everything they can to protect and serve you. And we are confident that when the time comes, you will do everything in your power to be our silent victors. We wish you and your crew good luck and Godspeed. Congratulations. Thank you, Ms. Boykin. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeffrey Geiger. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the men and women of General Dynamics Electric Boat, I'm honored to participate in the commissioning of Indiana, the 16th ship of the Virginia class. I'd like to begin by recognizing all of today's very distinguished platform guests, and in particular, Indiana sponsor, Mrs. Diane Donald, who has been an active member of the Navy submarine family for her entire adult life. It's difficult to think of anyone better suited to be a submarine sponsor than Diane. With her husband, retired Kirkland Donald, retired Admiral Kirkland Donald, Diane has been involved and in intertwined with our sailors and their spouses and families for many years. They are a team long dedicated to the Navy and its submarine force. The officers and crew of USS Indiana are fortunate indeed to have Diane as their sponsor. And just as the Admiral and Mrs. Donald form an awesome team, so too do, so too do the shipbuilders of Newport News Shipbuilding and Electric Boat, along with the United States Navy, our supplier base, and our supporters in Congress. Today's commissioning is an occasion of pride and fulfillment for everyone who played a part in getting this magnificent submarine to this point in its life. To each of you who contribute to this massive effort, thank you for your dedication and your hard, hard work. Our shipbuilding team is absolutely aligned in its purpose, working to ensure the Virginia class program continues to produce the finest submarines the world has ever seen. Our country demands and deserves no less. Together with the other ships of the Virginia class, USS Indiana embodies unprecedented capabilities, enabling it to play a pivotal role in our nation's defense and sustaining the Navy's undersea dominance for many years to come. Lastly, and most importantly, I want to acknowledge the contribution of, Command of Captain Jesse Zimbauer and his outstanding crew who have given this submarine life. Captain Zimbauer, your crew's level of performance is a testament to their tireless dedication to duty and relentless commitment to excellence. I know I speak for everyone here today when I extend my best wishes to Captain Zimbauer and his ship's company for a safe and distinguished tour duty. May the USS Indiana serve you, our Navy, and our nation long and well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Geiger. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Todd Rokita. Thank you, XO Spray. Governor, thank you for those words. Congressman Banks, thank you for the words you will say. Thanks to all my friends from Indiana who've joined us here today, especially those in the General Assembly. As the representative from a lot of the western part of the state of Indiana, I will be the first to tell you I've never been to a commissioning ceremony before. So, I didn't know what to expect, Ray Shear. But let me tell you, as we look at over the 5,500 ticketed guests here today, Representative Posey, Mayor Hogue, what a great constituency you have. Thank you for joining the great folks of Indiana here today. Thank you all for joining us here today. I know you're not up here for us. Will you let me at least speak for myself. I know you're here because you love this country. You love the men and women in uniform that protect us 
and you love and yearn for a continuation of the ideals, the principles, the freedoms that this country was found upon. And as each of us looks upon this great submarine today, a single thought must captivate our minds as it did my and my son's mind yesterday when we toured the boat. Only in the United States of America can a machine like this be made. <clears throat> As it has been previously mentioned, there's over a hundred Indiana companies that help make this happen, but much more than that. It's the hands, it's the hearts, it's the souls of hardworking Hoosiers that are imprinted within the walls of this submarine that makes it great. I know these people. I've been in the factories. The people who help build this boat love America. They will do anything for the men and women who serve on this boat. They will do anything for their country. This submarine is just the latest of three to set sail with the name USS Indiana. It is, adjoining, it is joining a legacy of greatness, Captain Petticord, and with the greatness comes high expectations to perform with excellence, to perform with grit and determination that our Navy prides itself on every day. For example, the last vessel to bear Indiana's namesake was awarded nine battle stars during World War II. We expect the same potency from this submarine, and as it was crafted with Hoosier pride and integrity, I am confident that this vessel will not let America down. Certainly, our prayers will go with the brave men and women as they serve on this exemplary weapon. But remember, a weapon as it is, it is not meant and will never occupy. It is meant to save and protect the innocent. And we all proudly support those who will serve to protect the freedoms we hold so dear. But let us not forget the real reason why America builds these vessels and why great men and women choose to serve aboard them. We build these machines to protect our freedom and our ideals of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But more importantly, we do it to safeguard the generations to come, to keep our children like my son Ryan, who's joining us here today, to keep them defended and protected from those who wish to take away our God-given freedoms. We fight to give our leaders of tomorrow a future. And maybe one day our children, including my son Ryan, will take on the duty to man a vessel like the USS Indiana. And because it was made with so many Indiana parts, this vessel will be around for my son. <laughs> but for now, our children's, our children are the ones we protect. So, XO, I am grateful, I am humbled, I am inspired by the service of our Navy and to be here with you for the commissioning of the USS Indiana. Above all, thank you to those who have served and those who have the responsibility and duty to man this submarine. God bless and Godspeed. Thank you, Representative Rokita. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable James Gertz. Distinguished platform guests, our wonderful sponsor, Diane Donald, and her husband, Admiral Donald. My teammate, Admiral Caldwell, the crew and family of the USS Indiana, fellow veterans, shipbuilders, Americans, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It's great to be back in Florida, not just because it's not the Pentagon, uh, but because Florida has always been such a great supporter for our military families. Uh, and th and the, uh, the 5,000 of you out here today supporting the military is just further evidence of the great support you've always given us. Thank you very much. As a son of a nuclear submarine plank owner, who was on a pier in the ceremony just like this about 54 years ago, it's my distinct pleasure to represent the Secretary of the Navy here at this ceremony with you. Commissioning ceremonies are a time-honored tradition of our Navy, and participating in these ceremonies are the most rewarding part of my job because they re represent two great strengths of our nation, teamwork and commitment. The teamwork and commitment of the wonderful commissioning team who's been working for years to put this event together. Your hard work to arrange today's event and transition a submarine under construction 
to the Navy's lethal fleet is quite impressive. Thank you for the great effort there. The teamwork and commitment of the thousands of suppliers from across the country, most of which were small businesses, mom and pop shops, who produced the millions of quality parts needed for this amazing submarine. These are the most sophisticated submarines in the world, and they're only possible with the ingenuity and hard work of our suppliers. And the teamwork and uh, commitment of our shipbuilders, the over 4,000 women and men from Newport News Electric Boat who have literally spent millions of hours to bend and weld the, weld the steel, assemble the parts, test the systems, and deliver this lethal platform to, to the fleet to carry out our nation's bidding and to protect our way of life. Your efforts to increase production to two of these wonderful submarines a year while cutting two years off of the production time is really an incredible feat and one for which you should be very proud. The teamwork and commitment of the crew standing before you who trained so hard to get ready for this day and for the days to come, ready when the nation calls on them to protect our freedom. The team and commitment of the Congress, who this week passed the defense budget to enable us to continue and build and support the Navy the nation needs to meet the challenges of today and tomorrow. The teamwork and commitment of our military members operating in harm's way all around the world, as we even speak here. They're on watch to ensure our freedom. And most importantly, the teamwork and commitment of our military families. For without their support, we would not have the world's best military. The USS Indiana is our most advanced nuclear submarine. It's filled with the innovations we need to compete and win. She's lethal, she's capable, she's quiet. She even has an Xbox controller to control her periscope. But even more impressive than all these great features, we've given this submarine a secret weapon, a weapon no other ship in the world has. And that weapon is Diane. Oh, you're a weapon, all right. Diane, we're so thankful for all you've done for the, for the ship, and will do, to guide this submarine and her crew as her sponsor. The USS Indiana will join the Navy, carrying on the proud tradition of her namesake, Indiana. It pays tribute to the legacy of all the sailors who've gone before us, especially those generations of Indiana crew members dating back to the Spanish-American War, War and World War II. This Indiana, guided by Captain Jim Byron and his crew, and those that will follow him will shape their own future. I'm confident that this submarine with its well-trained crew and the support of Indiana and all of America is ready to take on the many challenges she will face now and in the years to come. Captain Jim Byron and the crew of the USS Indiana, good luck to you on the days ahead as you enter the fleet in the world's best Navy. God bless this submarine, God bless this crew and their families, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Gertz. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Frank Caldwell. Good morning. It is an absolute honor to be here today to commission our 16th Virginia class submarine. This is a great day for Indiana. It's a great day for our shipbuilders and it is a great day for the United States Submarine Force. Governor Holcomb, you know, Indiana has always supported our Navy in a strong way, and today Indiana owns the bookends of U.S. Navy ships. Crane, Indiana provides the timbers for our oldest commissioned ship, USS Constitution, and today, you've heard it already, over 100 vendors have supported the construction of our newest submarine, USS Indiana, and I think that's incredible. We've heard about our weapon already, Miss Diane Donald. Now, Diane, your husband left an indelible mark on the nuclear propulsion program, and your leadership of submarine families has continued that legacy. Thank you for your years of faithful service to the United States Navy, and I know for certain that you will guide the families and crews, make them strong, make them resilient, so that USS Indiana is always, always ready to serve the nation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are living in a world of great power competition. Our competitors seek to, seek to take the advantage from us in the undersea domain. 
It is important for our nation to continue to build the very best submarines in the world, to find, recruit, and train the best sailors we can find, and to man our ships with the best weapon systems and sensors that we can. USS Indiana and her sisters of the Virginia class will maintain our edge in the undersea environment. Soon, Indiana will deploy her stealth, endurance, and her flexibility to travel silently under the oceans, protecting our nation. She will be undetected, collecting intelligence, preparing for battle, and if necessary, striking from the deep, swiftly, without notice, to defend our nation. Now, none of this would be possible without the great shipbuilding team of Newport News Shipbuilding and Electric Boat and the thousands of vendors around the United States. I'm proud to be associated with these folks. I've been to sea on this ship with many of them, and I would tell you that today we not only commission a submarine, but we recognize and thank all of the vendors and all of the shipbuilders. They build this ship with great skill, with tremendous pride, and great patriotism, and I'm proud to be associated with them. And finally, to Commander Zimbauer and the awesome Indiana crew. Much has been demanded of you during final construction and at-sea testing. Today, all of your work will bring this ship to life. Stay true to your motto, silent victors. The nation, the Navy, and all of us Hoosiers are depending on you. Thank you, and God bless Indiana and all who sail in her. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have the distinct pleasure of introducing our principal speaker today. He is an esteemed Hoosier. He is a man who not only strongly advocates for our service members and our veterans in the House of Representatives, but he too has served. He has deployed in the service of our country to Afghanistan, and he has served the nation well. I can think of no one more appropriate to deliver our principal remarks today than Congressman Jim Banks. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Congressman Jim Banks. Admiral Caldwell, distinguished guest, it is a great honor to be here with each and every one of you today. What a fine Navy day to commission the best named boat in the United States Navy, the USS Indiana, right? Today, though, has historical significance in the relationship between Congress and the armed forces. On this date in 1789, it marked the final day of the very first session of the United States Congress. That first Congress passed an act to establish America's armed forces. And from that day to this day, we have stood on the shoulders of the men and women, including those of us who are with us today, who have served in defense of this great nation. Today, we commission a technological marvel that has been built by men and women who share in the spirit of Indiana, the hardworking Hoosiers who embody the crossroads of America. But the, Virg the Virginia-class boat is the best attack submarine in the world. Now, some ask if China's Type 095 can match it, in case the Chinese are listening today, and I hope this makes you very proud, it can't. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I like to think, in spite of our location geographically in the Midwest, that Indiana is a Navy state. From uh, our legendary statesman, former United States Senator Richard Lugar, who served in the Navy, to our current and great governor, Eric Holcomb, who, by the way, was an early influence on me to serve in the Navy to begin with, to, sent to United States Senator Todd Young, who is a graduate of the Naval Academy, to Congressman Larry Bouchon from the opposite corner of the state of Indiana, and myself, who served as Navy Reserve officers before we got to Congress, uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of examples of Navy leadership from the great state of Indiana. Indiana has historically been a leader in Naval leadership and ingenuity. 
The first modern battleship ever built in America was BB-1, also known as the USS Indiana. Commissioned in 1895, the battleship served in the Spanish-American War near the turn of the century. The second USS Indiana was a planned battleship laid down in 1920. Construction was halted in 1922 following the adoption of the Washington Naval Treaty. The third USS Indiana was a South Dakota-class battleship launched just one month before the attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941. It saw action in numerous campaigns in the Pacific to include in the Mariana Islands, Okinawa, and Iwo Jima. The ship's anchor, by the way, resides outside the Allen County War Memorial Coliseum in Fort Wayne, Indiana, in my district. This amazing submarine that is commissioned today has a crest that honors the heritage of USS Indiana. We see the nine silver stars which represent the battle stars USS Indiana received from her Pacific operations in World War II. The crest of the Indiana says much about the ties between our great state and this fine boat. From the shape of the state in the background, the color blue, which reminds us both of our flag's color and one of the, the traditional navy colors. It is, as the song goes, blue of the mighty deep, gold of God's great sun. The checkered flag in the background denotes the racing heritage that we in Indiana are so proud of, reminding us of the victories of the past and spurring us to future endeavors. Just above the silver dolphin that stands for the essential Navy enlisted submariners, you may be able to see one small star on the forward turret of BB-58. This represents Naval Support Activity Crane, Indiana, the third largest naval installation in the world. The Indiana is not only about places and things that demonstrate deep connection, though, it's about the Hoosier spirit. Many Hoosiers have served in the Navy admirably, are serving today, and will serve in the future. And I'd like to just take a moment to point out a few of their contributions. To begin with, Admiral Jonas Ingram hailed from Jeffersonville, Indiana. He served in both world wars. While getting his start at the Naval Academy, Ingram was a member of the school's rowing track and football teams, leading the latter team to the midshipmen's first victory in six years, by the way, over their bitter rivals, the Army, by scoring the lone touchdown in the 1906 clash. His athletic exploits earned him the Academy's prestigious, prestigious athletic sword and induction into the College Football Hall of Fame in 1968. According to the College Football Hall of Fame, they called him the one-armed admiral because he often claimed, I'd give my right arm to win this football game. <laughs> Even more amazing, though, were his pursuits on the battlefield. On April 22, 1914, he landed at Veracruz, Mexico with the Ar Arkansas Battalion and was later awarded the Medal of Honor for distinguished conduct in battle and skillful and efficient handling of the artillery and machine guns. During the second day's fighting, the service performed by him was described as imminent and conspicuous. Admiral, you'd be proud. This, this was a man who understood the value of joint operations before the idea was embodied in our doctrine. During World War I, he was awarded the Navy Cross for his services in the Atlantic Fleet's battle force. Between the wars, though, he returned to the Naval Academy to serve as both athletic director and football director from 1926 to 1930. To rally the team, and excuse me for a moment, quote, he used to say, the Navy has no place for good losers. The Navy needs tough sons of a bitches who can get out there and win. I think President Trump would really like Admiral Ingram's fighting spirit. <laughs> His time during World War II was focused in the Atlantic, but on November 15, 1944, he was appointed Commander-in-Chief, U.S. Atlantic, Atlantic Fleet. He played a major role in assuring the steady flow of troops and materials to Europe across the Atlantic during the later phases of World War II. 
He, he also directed Atlantic fleet efforts in containing and destroying the German U-boat fleet. For exceptionally meritorious service during his command, he was awarded a gold, a gold award star in lieu of a third Distinguished Service Medal. A near contemporary of Ingram, though, was Henry M. Molinix. Molinix hailed from Spencer, Indiana, and graduated from the Naval Academy in 1916. He served in the Atl Atlantic during World War I, conducting patrol and escort duty off the coast of Ireland. As part of a long line of Navy engineers hailing from Indiana, he completed work in aeronautical engineering at both Annapolis and at MIT. After flight training at Naval Air Station Pensacola, Florida, he was designated a naval aviator on January 11, 1924. He was one of those mainly responsible for developing the air-cooled engine for naval aircraft. He commanded the USS Saratoga in April 1943. Saratoga was the operational US fleet carrier in the critical South Pacific at the time. After Molinix was promoted to Rear Admiral, he was relieved by fellow Hoosier Captain John Cassidy, who also hailed from Spencer, Indiana. Cassidy would go on to become Commander of, in Chief of US Naval Forces, Eastern Atlantic and Mediterranean from 1954 to 1956, after serving as Deputy Chief of Naval Operations. He also served as Sixth Fleet Commander from 1952 to 1954. While, while not a sailor, Samuel Woodfill also hailed from Jefferson County, Indiana. He was a veteran of the Philippine-American War, World War I, and World War II. General John Pershing called Woodfill, quote, the most outstanding soldier in all of World War I. He won the Medal of Honor by single-handedly neutralizing three German machine gun emplacements while suffering the effects of mustard gas successfully leading his soldiers back to friendly lines without casualties. These are some examples of fine and heroic Hoosiers, and they are the firm foundation that we benefit from today as we celebrate their legacies. Now, it was very formative for me, though, to have served in uniform as a Navy Reserve officer side by side with other service members in Afghanistan. There is a unique bond of trust that develops between service members when operating together under difficult and challenging circumstances. For me, that understanding of the importance of trust began years before as former sailors mentored me, introducing me to the virtues of public service. For example, as I mentioned before, Senator Richard Luger was one of those who spent time with me and inspired me to serve. His own service as a naval officer included time as an intelligence briefer for Admiral Arleigh Burke. Senator Luger's lasting contributions to our nation, both in uniform and in Congress, were a great model for me to serve in the Navy and also to serve our great state uh, in Congress and at the State House. I'm thankful for the time I got to spend with Senator Luger, and I want to thank him publicly today for his great uh, public service to our state and nation. Thank you, Senator Luger. I also want to thank my great friend and our governor, Eric Holcomb, for his encouragement for me to join the Navy and serve our nation in the first place. I appreciate your leadership for our great state and your many contributions to our national defense. Thank you, Governor Eric Holcomb. Now, I'm glad that the Indiana's crew has taken the opportunity to enjoy Hoosier hospitality and spirit. Indiana institutions continue to supply the Navy with the finest men and women today. For example, Purdue University supplies the most engineers to the entire United States Navy. And the University of Notre Dame supplies more nuclear officers than any other school in the country. Now one final note from the crest. Across the banner are the words silent Victors. This is taken directly from the Indiana Soldiers and Sailors Monument in Indianapolis. It is fitting for you sailors of the USS Indiana today about to embark on your next chapter. As this new chapter will be written by silent 
by the silent service, many of us will not know the full extent of the sacrifices and dangers that you will undertake. But without a doubt, it will be written by victors. You are those victors, trained and ready for every mission designed for this amazing technological platform and essential in this age of strategic competition. For whatever challenge you meet in a domain that most will never see, have confidence that you are backed by the faith of a nation that has stood strong for over 242 years. The Navy song ends with faith, courage, service true, with honor over, honor over all. May you maintain that faith, have steadfast courage, and serve with honor throughout all of your days. Godspeed and thank you for your service, fair winds, and following seas. Thank you, Representative Banks. Secretary Gertz, I would be honored if you would now place Indiana in commission. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy and for the President of the United States, I hereby place the United States ship Indiana in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who sail her. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and the commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the boat as we hoist the colors and commission pennant. Indiana, uh, ten, hut. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and commission pennant. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the colors and commission pennant are flying over USS Indiana. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders from Chief of Naval Personnel to Captain Jesse Zimbauer, United States Navy. Subject, Bupers Order Number 3463. When directed, detach present duty and proceed to pre-commissioning unit Indiana for duties in conjunction with fitting out. Upon commissioning of USS Indiana, report for duty as commanding officer. Signed, C.A. Cubble, Rear Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, Navy Personnel Command. Admiral Caldwell, USS Indiana is in commission, and I am in command. Very well, Captain. Congratulations. Aye, sir. <laughs> Executive officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Officer of the deck, set the first watch. Aye, aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and while on watch is responsible for the safety and smooth operation of the ship. The long glass is the traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. To assist in this tradition, Captain Gerald Petticord, United States Navy retired, a proud veteran of the battleship USS Indiana, BB-58 will assist in setting the first watch by passing the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Commander Jeremy Leisure from Riverbank, California. The petty officer of the deck is Petty Officer First Class Alfred Erdialis from Chicago, Illinois. The topside sentry is Petty Officer Second Class Austin Parker from Cincinnati, Ohio. And the bosun's mate of the watch 
is Petty Officer Second Class Joseph Barbera from Queens, New York. Set the watch. On deck, section one. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. We are delighted to have our sponsor, Ms. Diane Donald, with us today. Ms. Donald christened Indiana on April 29th, 2017. Diane, I would be honored if you would join me and give, me, give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. Today, we celebrate the time-honored tradition of placing USS Indiana into the service of our country. It has been the privilege of a lifetime to have a role in bringing this ship to life. But it is the sailors before you who are the heart and soul of the ship. They helped build this modern marvel and are now ready to take it to sea as a member of the world's greatest navy. To anyone who wish our nation harm, take heed. Indiana is taking the watch. Our new, <clears throat> our new silent victors are Indiana strong. Please join me and take a moment to recognize this crew and their families for their service aboard the Hoosier boat. Been a long time coming. Are you ready? <laughs> ready. Officers and crew of USS Indiana, man our ship and bring her to life. Aye, aye, man.
Ladies and gentlemen, the crew of USS Indiana salute you. We are proud to serve your great Navy. Ready, two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Captain, the ship is manned and ready. Very well. Vice Admiral Richard, USS Indiana reports for duty. Very well. Welcome to the fleet. Welcome to the fleet, aye, sir. Admiral Caldwell, request permission to break your flag. Break my flag, Captain. Aye, sir. Executive Officer, break the flag of Admiral Caldwell. Aye, aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of Admiral Caldwell. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, the flag of Admiral Caldwell is flying over USS Indiana. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, Captain Jesse Zimbauer, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS Indiana. All right, thank you. Indiana, parade, rest. I, uh, I have a little uh, rough voice this morning. Uh, we've been cheering for a couple days, and uh, the governor and I, uh, we did a bunch of shout outs yesterday. So I woke up this morning, my wife said, uh, you sound like the singer Barry White. <laughs> and I said, well, that's not really what I'm after. <laughs> I think it sort of gives me a little gravitas, you know, at a moment like this. So, um, wow, let's just take a moment and uh, look at these sailors on this ship right here. You wouldn't be out here if uh, you didn't have a good uh, lethal dose of patriotism. And uh, you cannot take a look at that. Um, those sailors dressed in their whites on the backbone of the world's newest and most lethal submarine and not just stand up and cheer. Unbelievable what this country can do. So I owe everything to, uh, uh, to my crew. Um, Admiral Richard, uh, I think that we have the uh, best looking crew. And if there's an award for that, put us in for it. <laughs> and the, uh, so a lot of people have been asking me, um, so how is it that a submarine crew that spent the majority of the summer beneath the waves has such uh, remarkable tans? And uh, I, for one, have the best tan of my life. And uh, it's because uh, we've spent the last week here in Port Canaveral. One week in Port Canaveral, and you can have a tan like this. So It's just a great place. Uh, the sailors have had uh, wonderful liberty. Um, we're all going local. Uh, the other day, I, I did a tour. And as I was uh, kind of sneaking out, I put flip-flops on, and, and I put uh, sunglasses on. I think I had a Ron John t-shirt on. And I was walking out, and uh, the tour group said, hey, I think that's the skipper. I said, boy, he looks different. And uh, absolutely, so I probably uh, head back home and uh, paint my house some pastels, maybe purple and turquoise, pretty popular around here. So, uh, But thank you very much. Um, we've got uh, over 5,000 people in attendance today at the uh, commissioning. Wow. You know, let me just say that none of this would be possible without the, uh, the work 
for years of the commissioning committee. That commissioning committee um, actually existed before Indiana existed, even in name. Uh, they worked on and petitioned the Secretary of the Navy um, to uh, have a ship named Indiana, and after 71 years, we have a new one. Um, so I thank them for everything that they've done and uh, for bringing all of you uh, good folks out. Um, we have uh, over 5,500 personnel or people here. Um, we have thousands of people from Indiana in the crowd today, which is amazing. Make that journey. Uh, so last night uh, it was uh, a little overwhelming. We, uh, the, the ship has been uh, provided with uh, many heartfelt uh, gifts and uh, things that are going to adorn this ship, make it the best in the fleet. Uh, you saw some of those. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of handmade stuff from Indiana. Um, we've got a, a quilt uh, from a group. Um, we uh, got a new tabletop that has uh, been handmade, 4,000 hours is what I've been told, uh, went into making that. Um, we got a cigar box. Um, everything that we've gotten uh, from Indiana is handmade uh, with love. Uh, Indiana itself, 92 counties, and every single county in Indiana have contributed something to our crew in this commissioning. Isn't that amazing? Wow. So I have it on good authority, Governor, that uh, from people that attend a lot of commissionings that Indiana has far and away exceeded any other commissioning state uh, to date um, in uh, your generosity and enthusiasm for this ship. Um, no surprise, you know, based on your support of the military and our veterans. So congratulations. I've taken five, I think I've taken at least five trips to Indiana uh, through the build process and commissioning this last year. I didn't get to make it out. We were pretty busy building the ship. Um, and uh, Mr. Shearer catalogs all that, and I didn't even realize until he started to go down the list. Um, some two dozen places that I visited uh, in uh, different communities throughout the state. You know, if you're in Indiana um, and uh, they know that uh, you're active duty military, your money's no good there. Um, if you wear whites in Indianapolis, you're not going anywhere. Don't have any plans. Uh, it's, a, it's a state that loves their veterans. Um, and uh, as uh, Congressman uh, was talking about, um, right downtown they have the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. So the state capitol has dedicated their prime real estate in the capital of the state. Um, and it's a grand monument if you've ever been there. It's a beautiful downtown. And they've dedicated that real estate to the soldiers and sailors. And on that monument, it says it's dedicated to the silent victors. And as was uh, eloquently told, you know, the silent victors has uh, some different meanings. But in the meaning on the monument, that is dedicated to the people who never got a parade. Okay? They sacrificed everything so that we could be here today celebrating and uh, carrying on with America and its greatness. Those are the silent victors that uh, are remembered right in downtown Indianapolis. And so when my previous chief of the boat, uh, Master Chief Herring, he's now Command Master Chief, um, he approached me and he says, hey, Captain, silent victors is on the uh, Soldiers and Sailors Monument. That means a lot to the people of Indiana. I think we should make that our motto. And I said, you know what, chief of the boat, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to remember those silent victors right on our ship's crest. So we have more heroes from that era today. That's amazing. Um, so we have uh, 12 original veterans from Battleship 58, commissioned in 1942, fought in real battles in World War II, helped us win that war. From 1942, uh, she uh, was decommissioned in 1947. Joining us on the stage, Captain Petticord, um, is uh, the uh, a, member of that crew, and he's also a uh, plank owner. So uh, Captain Petticord, he's 99 years old today. Ask him next week. He's going to tell you he's 100, 100 years old.
It's just amazing. Um, when he was uh, told that he was going to be part of the commissioning, I got a picture of it. Um, he, uh, he immediately went and put on his uh, dress blues that you see that he had. Those dress blues are apparently 60 years old. Um, and uh, So I got, a, I got a picture of it. He's sitting in his easy chair in his dress blues. And, uh, you know, what amazing dedication. You know, those sailors, um, they served and they never forgot. And now here we are 71 years later, and they are participating in our commissioning, and they are vetting us like we're heroes. And I got to tell you, they're the real heroes. God bless you. didn't do what they did when they did it, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing today. I uh, give you one vignette. I had the occasion. I met with uh, the BB-58 sailors, really due to the commissioning committee, um, have uh, reunited them with the ship. Uh, I met with them three different times. Um, I got to talk with uh, Mr. Thurman Jones uh, at the uh, BB-58 uh, reception that we did the other day. He's an HM3 on BB-3. And uh, he told me a story. He enlisted uh, in uh, he turned 18 one month after Pearl Harbor and immediately, re immediately enlisted in the Navy. Um, he joined the Navy in uh, Norfolk, and uh, in those days he had to take a little boat. So he took a little boat over to Newport News, uh, where the, uh, the battleship Indiana was being constructed and uh, being completed. So that battleship was constructed one dry dock over from where the USS, the current USS Indiana, was rolled out, launched, and where we finished construction. As a matter of fact, I parked my car and I looked into that dry dock every day. So that's a huge connection that brings the shipyard together, a shipyard that won a war with the men that won a war, and the new ship that's going to prevent one or win one if they end up starting one. So the men of Indiana, us few, 140, we're made strong by the support of many. So we're supported by uh, the best contractors in the world, the two premier uh, shipyards, Electric Boat and Newport News, uh, the laboratories, Knowles and Bettis. Um, in fact, uh, I don't know if uh, Mr. Epping's here, but if he is, I hope he is. Uh, so Mr. Epping was our lead physicist. Uh, when we uh, initially brought the, the ship to criticality. And uh, he's from Notre Dame, and uh, he'll let you know about it. And uh, the three other scientists that came down, um, they were from Purdue. Um, so that uh, lets you know where that power is. Um, all the contractors coming together, the support of our chain of command, and the rest of the Navy community, ensuring we're well trained and have everything we need to be successful. The 45th Space Wing, right over here and all the satellites they put into space over the years allowing me and my crew to communicate, gather intelligence, giving me a strategic advantage if I've got to go into the fight. But most of all, it's the support of you. It's Americans that get it. Americans with vision. Americans that will travel 1,000 miles to be a part of an extraordinary event. Americans from Indiana commission a new submarine. Admiral Richards, did you know that we have over 650 family and friends here at this today's commissioning? That's incredible. Wow. That's one heck of a statement about family support and support of our sailors. And really, that's a real war fighting advantage that we have. It's not the weapon system alone, and it's, it's really about the support that are behind the sailors operating it. So this week, you know, we'll finish uh, the commissioning and uh, sometime this week uh, the crew is going to finish pre-underways. Um, I'm going to do a piloting brief. Uh, we're going to have a uh, startup brief. They're going to start up the engine room. And uh, somewhere, sometime soon we're going to cast off these lines that you see right here. And I'm going to drift uh, the ship out 
kind of got an idea how I'm going to do that. We're going to be right out here in the basin, and uh, we're going to get the ship underway. And we're going to drive 25, 30 miles off the coast, and we're going to submerge. Those main ballast tanks are going to open, and she's going to slip dark and deep beneath the waters hundreds of feet. We're going to start making our way up north. While we're surrounded by the deep, it's going to be just us in the submarine. There's going to be an engine room lower level. He's going to be taking logs. There's going to be a quartermaster, and he's going to be charting our course, keeping us safe. Those sonarmen, they're going to be looking at all those contacts on those green screens. Some of you got to see when you toured the ship. Some of them are going to be dolphins. Some of them are going to be shrimp. Some of them are going to be uh, merchant ships. And uh, we're going to be putting it all together. Now imagine that, there we are, below the waves, making our own oxygen, making our own water, serving our meals, going through our watches, in our own little environment down there, powered by nuclear power. What are going to be on our thoughts? What are the sailors going to be thinking when we're underway? I can tell you what they're going to be thinking. They're going to be thinking about you. They're going to be thinking about the 5,000 people who came out to see us. They're going to be thinking about BB-58 and those veterans that thought it was important to come all the way out here to support those sailors. And I got to tell you, the support that we're getting from Indiana is going to be long-lasting for 32 years. And if that's the kind of support we get, this is going to be the greatest ship. It is with extreme honor that uh, we serve this great Navy. And I hope, it is my sincerest hope, that our crew and every crew that is going to serve on the USS Indiana will make the Indiana name proud, and Indiana will be synonymous with the best submarine in the United States Submarine Force. We truly salute you. Indiana! Hoosiers! Hoosiers! Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Underwood will deliver the benediction. Let us pray. O oh Lord, let your continued grace and mercy be shown upon us, and let your love guide and strengthen our hearts. Guide this crew to know your truth in their lives, and assist them in the difficult decisions coming forward. Father, these officers and crews are gathered here with us all in a moment of significant effort and authority to keep this boat alive and to continue the great mission of freedom and liberty. Bless them in their endeavors and strengthen their resolve for the days ahead. Guide them to know your will at all times and fill their hearts with hope, purpose, and the quiet confidence of the silent warrior. For you are good, and to you we ascribe all praise and glory. May we find the courage and the path and the strength to walk it, to serve you, our great nation, with integrity befitting honor. Amen.